I think my favorite all time was, was definitely uh, Kobe. I, oh, I, yeah. I think I think Kobe's was definitely my favorite because, again, at that time as he transitioned from the end of the game, you saw a different side of him that he was revealing, you know, and and him really taking you through his journey. You know, on, mm-hmm. on your episode in particular, just being at high school or coming up in the game and how he had to learn from certain players and how he had to be humbled. And then the 61 point game at the Garden, you know, breaking it down, how he studied Wilson Chandler and his tendencies. And um, I thought the Kobe one was just great, you know, just from a basketball standpoint and as a man, just really starting to learn who he was, you know, taking that veil off from the Black Mamba and just, you know, more personal, you know, seeing a more personal side of him. Um, just tragic that we lost him, but definitely one of my favorite ones. No, nah, all of us, but you know that was that was definitely a special one. Cause like I say, you know, when you play in the game, man, everybody know like I don't care who you was when when any time in within the years like twenty, what did he play? Twenty, twenty one, how many years he played? When he was in the NBA, I don't care who was the MVP, I don't care who was this. That was like he was the new Jordan. Like yeah. he was the guy you wanted him to know who you were. You wanted him to acknowledge you. You wanted him like, not on some, not on some, you know, kiss, you know, kissing his butt type mm-hmm, stuff, mm-hmm. but you, you just like, you want the best to know, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so it was like for, for, for me and Dee to get a chance to do that and get a chance to holler at him and really see like, okay, Cole rocked with us, he respect us. You know what I'm saying? Like that was, that was dope from that standpoint mm-hmm. and everything that went into it. You know, most of my guests that have had interactions with Kobe, I always ask them to, to share their favorite story. Uh, you played for the Lakers. He wasn't there on the team, but you played for no, the Lakers. No, no. You also shared the same agent in, in Rob Palenka. What, what was your favorite uh, Kobe story? Um, when I was a rookie, Kobe, I went up to the, I was at the All-Star. Um, I was, you know, the, the rookie sophomore game. Mm. And Rob was like, hey, come up. Kobe wants to talk to you. So Kobe and I talked for like 30 minutes. Um, and he was like, man, just continue working. Like, you're, you're badass, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he said, like, hey, just come to dinner with us. And I didn't have nobody to go to dinner with, whatever it was. So I go to dinner with him. And he's there with his security. And I remember it ended up getting on a conversation that he knew the TV shows that I watched. <laughs> and now I don't know if he got that from my agent. Yeah. But, like, we started talking about the TV shows that I watched. And, like the cartoons and the comic books and like the lore behind that. Um, and him and I got into like a deep, like a deep, like, I don't want to say a religious discussion mm-hmm. about those ideologies. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I walked away from that was like, how the fuck did this <laughs> dude know? It's like professor X. Right. Over he state dinner. The shit out of me. And I'm like, damn. <laughs> but like after that, it was always respect. And one time we were playing and Kobe was getting into somebody. And I was like, man, shut the fuck up, Kobe. <laughs> and he looked at me and goes, that better not be Channing Fry. That's it, it's me, you motherfucker. <laughs> because me, like, I'm super happy-go-lucky, yeah. but I do have a button. Like, if I like you, I'll joke with you like that. Mm-hmm. But like, I think he saw me go like, you know, blackout crazy. And he was just like, hey, Channing, you better calm down. Like, I'll foul you out this game. <laughs> And then I came back to Jesus, was like, ah, shit, yeah, I do want to play. Mom like, and talks, you got to listen. Yeah, 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 listen, look, he said something to me. I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and chill it out. Come get him. Jay Rich, go guard his ass. Yeah, I'm going to be cool. I'll be no over switch. here. I'm no chilling. switch. Yeah, yeah. no switch. <laughs> Rest in peace to Cole, man. You know, later on in your career, 98-99 um, lockout shortened season, you remember the Los Angeles Lakers, and that team was yeah. led by a superstar in Shaquille O'Neal and a budding mm-hmm. superstar in the late, great Kobe Bryant. And uh, Kobe's loss was, was certainly something that really magnified, mm. you know, this year. This was certainly a year of, of yeah. challenges and loss. Um, Kobe's passing is, is still hard to, to get over. Yeah. What, what were your favorite memories of, <sighs> of a young Mamba back during that time? Man, just how hungry the kid was, man. Just, uh, I, I'll tell you another story, man. Like I said, I, you know, when you're in it, you just have different moments that you've experienced with guys. And the one thing that I'll never forget about Kobe, who I became very, very good friends with, if you would, uh, because I was an old man and he was a young kid and the kid was eager as hell to learn and to get better. Mm. He used to beg guys to play one-on-one with him. Eddie Jones, uh, Derek Fisher, anybody, beg him. 
Like, please, I want to play one-on-one before practice. <laughs> so I'm looking at him walk around, challenging people, man, wanting to play one-on-one, just wanting Ruben Patterson, you name it. Nobody wanted anything to do with him. Like, it's too crazy, man. We, we got to practice before, before this, blah, blah, blah. So me being an old man and, and, and having nothing to lose, I said, okay, shit, I'll go. I'll play one-on-one with you, Kobe. Come on, man. So I'm thinking we're going to go over here and kind of go through the motion of playing a little before practice one-on-one. Man, when I tell you the guy went at it like it was, it was <laughs> the NBA finals, man, I was like, whoa. And there was one moment case where he elbowed me here in my chin on the side of my chin. Uh. And, you know, being, being a veteran, being a guy that had been around, that had paid some dues, that was respected, I wanted to fight the kid. <laughs> I really did. I'm just like, man, I know you didn't elbow me like that. And Kobe is the only guy that I know that got taped, man, before practice. Mm. And when everybody else was getting ready to leave, he would go back and get taped wow. after practice to work on his well, individual well, yeah, game. Yeah. So for those that think he lucked or, or just so happened to be great, he did it. Kobe worked harder than any NBA basketball player that I know. Hmm. And I know Michael Jordan worked hard. All greats work hard. Mm-hmm. Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, Wilt, Kareem, Bill Russell, Jabbar, everybody. All guys work hard, man. But none like Kobe Bryant, man. This, this dude was this, – this, he was a workaholic, man. Mm-hmm. And that's why Kobe was so great. Like everybody, I was flabbergasted after mm-hmm. learning that he, he, uh, he and his daughter were not going to be with us any longer. But, mm-hmm. man, I, I respect that guy, man. I, he, he's a prime example of you don't luck in, Casey, if you would – to being great. You have to work yourself work. into being great. Yeah. And that's what he was, one of the all-time greats by far. So so you got to see the the developments of the black mamba, the, the young baby mamba. You saw the fangs starting to come out, man. He caught you with a bow, man. That's an old school move, right? There. Yeah, he, he, he <laughs> caught me with everything. He's from Philly. <laughs> and he was a rap phenom- phenom. Love rap music. Yeah. And he started talking to me about Jigga. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew nothing about Jigga. <laughs> so I'm, I'm one of Jay-Z's biggest fans because of Kobe because Bryant. Of Kobe. Man. He wow. put me down telling me that lyrically Kobe Bryant, uh, Jay-Z, had more lyrics than Biggie, than Pop, <laughs> than everybody that exists. So I love Jigga right now. Man, because of Kobe, man. man that's, that's my guy. That's a funny story, man. Very interesting yeah. story. Thank, thank you for sharing that. Um, she, you know, you had mentioned the, the late, great Kobe Bryant. Um, do you remember the last conversation you had with him? Um, I would probably say for me, the last combo or, you know, a few words that I share with Kobe was uh, before and or after that game seven when I was with Boston. Mm. You know, when I, when I came back with, with the Knicks, uh, it was just more of a uh, of a high and by, you know, mm-hmm. it was a respect level. Um, we didn't, it wasn't the best where we like always hanging out, but it was a respect level. He knew me, I knew him. He knew my family, I know his family, you know what I mean? And and it was, it was, it was a good moment, man. You yeah. know, just looking back at it now, of course, wishing that he was still here. You, yeah. know, you never want to see a, a young brother lead his earth too soon, but, um, I think he still could have did a lot for the game of basketball. Yeah, so yeah. Um, terrible and, and untimely tragedy for sure, man. You know, Kenyon, in, in, in your Bleacher Report, um, Players Tribune, sorry, Players Tribune write-up, you, you said Kobe was, was one of the players that you you hated playing against. Well, what was it about the Mamba, man, that, that you know, he was just th- th- tough? And then, you know, when he went to Denver, you played him a, a ton of times as, as a member of the Nuggets. I yeah. mean, talk talk about those matchups with Kobe. I didn't get to play against Mike in his prime. I uh, played against the Wizards, Mike. He still was good, still was competitive. So I think Kobe is the closest thing to Mike that I played against. Um, so I could only imagine the, 
the turmoil that might cause guys when he was playing good defenders, guys who and I, and I looked at myself as a good defender, um, made made things tough on everybody I played against. But um, for Kobe, uh, it was it was different because everything that I would do, he had accounted for. Mm. Um, get physical mm. with him. He uses finesse and just the different things like that. You know, his footwork was second to none. Uh, so me trying to Im- impose my will on him, he had accounted for it. You know, so that made him one of the, if not the toughest player that I ever had to play against. Did Did you ever see like you know they always say with the greats that they could always take it to another gear. You know, especially late in games. You know, they could always take it to another gear that some players can't can't reach. Did you ever see that with him? I I, I never caught got caught into it because I was playing. Mm. You know, I, I never was in awe during the game. I never was a fan during the game. Mm. You know, every time we battled, it was we were battling. So I never looked at it as that. You know, he might make tough shots. Mm. That's just. But I'm playing good D. Yeah. You know, so I never looked at it as him going into a certain mode or certain place and he might have made some tough shots uh, but that's just what I looked at it as uh, so you, 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 you can put them together where you string them bucket after bucket after bucket but you're not just going to score on me continuously mm-hmm. now, I'm going I'm, I'm to do something about it but if I got to knock you on your ass and, or I got to come across your head then I'm going to do that <laughs> you know, you're not just, not just gotta, gonna be busting my ass. You know, listen. The story won't be you bust Kenyon ass. I can tell you that. Like that won't be the narrative. They can, you made, it, you made it might start it. that. It might start that way, but the second half of that story might be a little different. <laughs> <laughs> it might be a little different now. But he, God rest his soul. Yeah, man. man. Going too soon, man. man. Way soon. entirely too soon, man. It's, uh, it's one of them things that you never. Expected. Never think what happened, and you never get over. It. You know, so uh, my prayers and condolences go out to his loved ones, his family, man, his wife, his kids, his his parents. Um, you know, they are more affected than anybody, man. So it's very, very unfortunate that that he's no longer with us. Um, you never think that a sports icon of his nature um, won't live to be old like the rest of them sure. guys, man. So it's very, very unfortunate. I actually had talked to the young man, Kobe Bryant, not too long ago. Last year, uh, my group, Prophets of Rage, we were appearing on the same show, on the Jimmy Kimmel show. And I uh, went in his room and chatted it up a little bit. And uh, actually, we, our conversation <laughs> was about daughters, because mm-hmm. I ain't going to talk about, you know, music and hip hop and he ain't gonna talk about balls so that was the common denominator and also i said you know give a shout out to your dad joe bryant because i'm from the joe bryant mm. school of you know this is my my growing up thing so kobe was always this you know okay he's a, a new young cat this is a young superstar and when i first met kobe it was outside the old house of blues in la and he had appeared um as an audience member for this situation i was performing at and at right there you know i met him and this was like maybe he was in 2002 2004 in that area he was the most memorable athlete i ever ever met mm. and i couldn't get over that i mean it really was it stood out we met a lot and he was like, yes, sir. It's a pleasure to meet you, sir. And I said, I don't know if he's putting me on. I know you ain't putting me on, but the but the way he presented himself um, showed me that this this cat was different. Um, I knew he knew a couple of languages, which also puts you a yeah. step ahead. Uh, he had different aspirations and and different likes as he grew up. You know, he's a different cat, and to see him in a whole different mode, I was like, wow, you know, he's mannerable. And that's what was my first impression. Kobe is a cultural icon. And at the beginning, or I should say at the tail end of last century, where the cultural icons of ball and rap started to be accepted equally in both platforms. And David Stern fought against this for a very long time because he didn't want to kind of see the the integrity or the game be overtaken by, by this culture culture, of hip hop and rap and so be it, whatever. But by 97 and 98, especially at the game at the Garden, the All-Star game at the Garden, Mm -hmm. we saw the page get turned. 
And Kobe was kind of like in the beginning of that. You know, we know we had Allen Iverson and all that, but it seemed like this was the acceptance of hip hop and ball pretty Coming much together. being marketed both ways. It's pretty much totally the other way now. Yeah. But um, that was the beginning of, of the dual cultural icons where it could get mo- marketed from the league and also marketed from, from the music. And Kobe was part of that first generation, a world icon. Because wherever the music traveled, wherever the NBA traveled with its global um, outreach, they both rode similar paths of cultural respect. So, the, and Kobe was the epitome of bringing that into the forefront, but still keeping the old school ethic mm. of hard work, not taking the easy way out. And I'm not saying the new school didn't look at it that way, but Kobe definitely brought a lot of the old school ethic with the new school game. And he just had, he was a combination of a whole bunch of different things all the way to when he, you know, was working down in, in uh, Philadelphia making his his rap album because i happened to have a couple of situations with sony at the time mm. and uh kobe was involved with that so kobe was really the, the one of the first breed the superstars that came from an aspect where both realms of culture coming from the black environment had to get respected equally and marketed equally from both sides and um i could tell you straight up on the phone man that kobe going all out for his school and his and his kids and his, his daughters and was just like what he did and, and, and planted his career, man. Don't take the easy way out, man. So I, that's that's the best I can say, man, as a, as man to man in my in my last conversation with him, which was no more than eight months ago. And, and you know that it's a beautiful thing that, that you mentioned um, in, in terms of the passion that that he carried towards raising his family was the same uh, that he carried in, in terms of being the best in the game. And, you know, I'm, I'm kind of getting to that corny dad stage. I'm a brand new dad. My son is uh, he's 16 months. But yep. that that's something that I really admired watching Kobe after his playing career, because it's like. As you said, he caught you by surprise by being a, a, a well-mannered dude because on the court, he was so ferocious and so focused on taking your head off on the court, just like MJ. You know, that's why they called him the Black Mamba, you know, one of the yeah. most venomous snakes at, in, in the animal kingdom. And so once he started, you know, taking his daughter around to the games and, and you saw that the camaraderie that he had with the players, you saw him actually smiling so much more. And, and he right. just seemed like he was so happy and at peace uh, with his career post-retirement. And the images that I saw of him and his daughter and, and how proud he was to, to, you know, embrace her passion for the game as a father myself who, who's trying to, you know, come up and, and learn the best ways to teach my son and, and uh, bring him up in the values that my parents instilled in me. I just thought that was one part of Kobe that I really admired post uh, playing career. 